See that, guys? There's some play. Looks like my truck has been eating up wheel bearings. Hey, guys. In this video, I'm going to show you the five most common ways to wear down your wheel bearings faster. For those of you guys who are new to this channel, my name is Carl, and this channel is dedicated to all things mods, DIY, and engineering for your second and third gen Tacomas. So make sure you smash that like and subscribe button already. Do it now, guys. Come on, do it, do it! We have a bunch of new products at the store, guys. So make sure you check them out. Link in the description below. So this is the front wheel bearing assembly for the Tacoma and some of the newer IFS Toyotas. And in simpler terms, the front wheels mount on this and the tire goes... To give you guys a better visual of how everything assembles, this is your CV axle. It goes right through the center of the spindle or steering knuckle. And this is the wheel bearing that mounts right onto this front face. You have these four bolts here that mounts onto these four threaded holes here. This is what it looks like on the truck. So you can see right here is that whole CV axle going into the front diff. And this here is a steering knuckle with the wheel bearing right behind this dust shield. I'll show you a different shot right now. Don't mind all this white crust and all this de-rusting. I'll probably go over that in a future video, so stay tuned. Now, if we press out this hub portion where the wheel mounts to, we're left with just the actual wheel bearing, which is back here. Here's a couple of 3D printed examples of what a wheel bearing looks like. See, this wheel bearing has a bunch of balls in between. There's an inner race outer race that those balls ride on. This outer side is the one that's basically mounted onto the spindle of the truck. The CV shaft is mounted here. Allows pretty much to give that rotational force. And here's a different one guys where you have a bunch of barrel pins. A similar idea, those pins spin around the inner and outer race and these are just sections that allow for the barrels not to move out of place so you get the idea now what happens when a bearing wears down and there's multiple scenarios that's basically happening here those balls that you see those barrel pins they end up wearing down and they get smaller and it also could also be a combination of the inner and outer races which is this inner and outer ring the grooves that those balls or those barrel pins ride on end up just getting deeper and deeper. So what happens? If those balls get smaller and those grooves get deeper, you get slop. And this technically is supposed to be real tight. And if those surfaces don't make as much contact, they're gonna slop like as you see in this video here. Now there are two easy steps to figure out whether or not your front wheel bearing for your IFS front suspension has gone bad. First is to roll down your windows and basically listen for this noise or something similar to it. Now the second part, you do have to jack up the front of your truck, grab the top and bottom of your tire and then just rock it back and forth to feel for any play and do that front and back as well. And if you hear this knocking as you're moving it back and forth and you see this play, that means that wheel bearing is bad. So now that you guys know what an IFS front wheel bearing looks like and what a bad wheel bearing looks like as well, let's talk about all of the forces that this wheel bearing goes through. Because obviously there's rotational forces as you see here, but it's actually much more than that. So let's take a look at it a little bit deeper. Here is basically a rough diagram of the front IFS on the Tacoma. 
And to point out these parts, this part here is the CV axle. This section here is the steering knuckle. And this is your hub and wheel bearing assembly here your wheel and tire combo up here. Now the stock weight on a Tacoma is about 4,400 pounds. Now, since there are four tires, let's just say the weight is evenly distributed among those four tires. So therefore this 4,400 pounds will have an equal and the opposite distributed weight onto each tire of about 1,100 pounds. Makes sense, right? So now let's simplify this drawing a little bit. So we're just concentrating on the forces in this section here, which is the wheel hub assembly section. And if we take a look, it will be essentially like this. We'll have a beam deflection problem, which in mechanics of solid is basically just a beam and we're pushing up 1100 pounds on that. So this section here is the, the tip of the CV axle. And this section here is basically the wheel bearing hub. Even though we have 1100 pounds going this way, we are also basically creating an internal stress because this is essentially trying to twist this beam in the counterclockwise direction. So it's, uh, it's basically we're torquing this thing when we're applying that force. Now this bending force here is called the internal bending moment. So imagine this force is just how it is when the truck is standing still. Now what happens if we're actually hitting the gas or hitting the brakes? Now this cantilever problem actually goes this way towards the page and away from the page. So there's a lot of forces that this bearing sees. Now we'll touch more on that internal moment in a bit. So let's get into the ways to wear down those wheel bearings faster. Now, larger tires on the Tacoma looks freaking badass. I'm not gonna lie. But by slapping on those larger tires, you know what else you're doing? You're also wearing down those wheel bearings faster. And why? Let's take a look at that FBD again. So let's say this is a diagram for the stock size tires. The forces on the tire is actually distributed like this. It's not a, a point load, but when you do add them together, that adds up to just one point load roughly in the middle of the tire so with the tacoma the suspension is so close to the tires that in order to fit bigger tires we'll actually have to either put properly backspaced wheels or wheel spacers so let's say we do put wheel spacers we'll just over impose it on top of this drawing so that the wheel goes further out just like that and the tire gets bigger so our tire gets a little bit bigger. This is the smaller stock size tires. And let's say this is like the 33s, 35s. And similarly, the forces here is going to be distributed among the tire. But all these forces will add up more towards the center of the tire itself. So now you see the force is moving outwards just by like maybe about an inch and a half or so, depending on the back spacing of the wheel and the tire size. So now what, what happens to the forces or the internal moment? Let's go back to that simplified model. So your 1100 pounds, it moves further out this way. And what does this mean when we're moving this outwards? So this internal bending moment actually gets bigger because it's almost like we're adding a little bit of a cheater pipe. So those rollers inside this bearing will have to fight against this larger moment. So guys, take note that when we increase those internal forces, we are also increasing the internal wear. That makes sense, right? Now I will touch a little bit more on the wheel spacers towards the end of this video. All that weight that you're putting on your truck, the armor, the sliders, the winch, the rooftop tent, and all that camping gear, you're putting extra weight and extra forces on those bearings. Now in my personal setup, I do have the ARB bumper, which is 230 pounds. I also have that trail gear slider, 
which is roughly about 100 pounds. Now my four wheel camper is probably the heaviest thing on my setup, which is close to about 1200 pounds. So that adds up to a total of 1530 pounds, guys. If we divide that by four, that's 383 pounds, which is a percentage of 35% higher than stock weight, guys. So again, repeat after me. Higher forces equals higher wear. The forces that we have been discussing are based on forces while the truck is standing still. Now, four-wheeling off-road driving is pretty harsh on those bearings. So let's take a look at some scenarios in terms of the forces that those bearings seize when we're four-wheeling, rock crawling. So here's one scenario, guys. Let's say you're four-wheeling and then you're balancing on two tires. So what happens to the forces on each wheel? So on those two tires that you're balancing, to go back to this diagram, this 1,100 pounds basically doubles, right? And when that doubles, imagine the amount of internal moment this wheel bearing is now seeing. So here's another scenario, guys. Let's say you're dropping off of a rock ledge. This 4,400 pounds, that mass is now multiplied by the gravity. So you're multiplying the mass of the truck times gravity over the distance of the height of your drop. So that amount of force will definitely be multiplied as well. Now I know many of you guys will say that the shocks and spring will decelerate the weight of the truck on a gradual basis. But what happens to the unsprung weight of the tire? And even though that mass is being decelerated, all that force is still being absorbed by the wheel bearing. Bam! Isn't that a work of art, guys? That is the Tacoma to scale. So here's another scenario. Let's say you're trying to climb a rock face. We're introducing massive amounts of forces to this wheel bearing in the front because we're pushing up against that tire until it finally climbs over this rock face. And then what happens to this one? We're also pushing against that wheel bearing this way. So now you basically have a double whammy. You're compressing those two wheel bearings together in order to just achieve that simple rock climb. So four wheeling is definitely hard on your bearings. I do enjoy a good bit of mudding and a good bit of water boarding. Now, many of you guys are probably not aware of this, but each time you're doing a little bit of mudding, a little bit of water fording, you're actually forcing water into the seals of those wheel bearings. The seals under here are definitely water resistant, but not waterproof. So what do you think what happens when we go mudding and wheeling and we're forcing all that water in there and washing away all the grease? And now imagine if you get a little bit of mud stuck in there. Now you have water mixed with some grit, which what happens when it's spinning at very fast pace against rubber, you're essentially wearing out those rubber seals. Yeah, it looks like that seal held up okay for the most part, but you can see there's a lot of, a little bit of mud and debris that got in there. Now I thought I'd leave the best discussion for last because I've seen many comments on this channel saying spacers are bad without too much thought into it. Now of course spacers just like this one is obviously very bad. Now let me ask you, what's the main difference in terms of internal forces on those wheel bearings when it comes to properly sized wheel spacers and properly backspaced wheels? Absolutely nothing, guys. The wheel bearing will still see the same internal stresses. Of course, there's a risk with the spacer as an additional point of failure, but that's beyond the point right now of the forces it sees inside the wheel bearing itself. So if you guys have any friends who just say spacers are bad without too much thought into what they're saying, and they're also slapping all this gear and all this weight with bigger tires, and they're still wondering why there's front wheel bearings are wearing down so quick, share with them this video because at least this sheds some light to a lot of people's ignorance when it comes to wheel bearings. Now I'm not telling you not to build out your truck. You're a freaking adult. Do whatever the hell you want with your truck. The point of building it out is take on 
bigger adventures and bigger obstacles. So keep testing, keep experimenting, and just keep building, guys. And best of all, make sure you enjoy the process. So that's it for this video, guys. Please support this channel by checking out our store. And until next time, peace out.